Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. I am so excited to be here. Right I'm now. so excited too. I feel like you've been gone for ages. I've been gone for three weeks. The last episode, um, as you guys may or may not have seen, was a bi-coastal episode. Um, you keep saying, do you know what bi-coastal I, means? I mean bi-continental. I mean bi-continental. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I just like bi-coastal more. It just rolled <laughs> no, up I just the let it happen. It was hilarious. You and Amari ate Paige and I the fuck up. I think it was amazing. Tana called us beforehand and she goes, do not drink. I don't want you guys slurring it up. I'm blacked out. And this. you know what she was doing? Slurring it up. Absolutely slurring. It's funny because... Well, I shot the Saving Grace podcast before then uh -huh. and in London and people have like wanted me to do that for so long. And like, she's amazing. Like if she was here, she'd be our best friend. You, like you'd love her. Aww. And the team was just like, got all these American foods for me, like all this champagne. Aww. And like, they all like wanted to drink, you know? So it was like, not that they pressured me. Obviously I was like down, but I'm just saying, and then we podcast for like two and a half hours while drinking. Yeah, by the time just, we got to canceled. It's like when we did the Sophia episode and by the time we did her episode, you were like, mm. yeah, I might've approved a two sped up version and all the I know you like, sounded like um like literally like Alvin in the chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little scary. All the comments, all it. the comments thought I was like doing whippets or something. <laughs> like I was the fact that anything like that can happen to me. Like my voice is sped up, and people are like, "Oh my god, are you on whippets? Are you doing helium, Tana? Don't let London turn you into that." It's like, are people doing helium? That's what they say in London. Like we're doing helium, and they like oh. the balloons. I don't know. Like in, at parties in London, you'll walk in and the floor is all covered with balloons, but they're filled with like whippets. Not that I've ever taken part in that dead ass. What's the science behind? Can you? Okay, never mind. I really don't know the science behind that. Anyway, but. no whippets for Tana, just a sped up podcast. Yeah, just a sped up podcast and no whippets. I don't know where to begin. I think you have to tell me about your London trip. I uh, London slash Paris slash Saint Tropez slash Italy. Um, Saint Tropez is in France, I think, but I don't know anything. So, is it Ari nodding off camera looking so disgusted that I don't know that? Should I break it down for you? Uh huh. It's funny because I have two specific stories that I want to tell you so bad. One where I fought a woman, I tried to fight a 55 year old woman and- That seems like an unfair advantage. I, that's why I didn't do it. That's good. But I guess I could just take it from the top, right? Yeah, start at the beginning. Well, so I went to London to shoot uh, 20 versus one with the side men. I heard it was really funny. It was so funny. It's just like, Brooke, you would have killed yourself. Like oh. what? you have to do to these people because here i'm going into this shit and i talked about this on the last episode so i'll make it quick but like yeah i'm going into this shit thinking like maybe i'm gonna find love today and like some of the guys are hot and like we're probably not love but like dick okay um, yeah but like and we're hitting it off and whatever but the third round they put the earpiece in you and you have to do whatever they tell you to do and say oh i would have such a hard time because i don't like like hurting people's feelings and just like creating such an uncomfortable environment like i i made a guy like shave his beard and then like told him to get the fuck out like i wouldn't even like you like i wouldn't like you if you don't shave your beard i was chasing a grown man with a ping pong paddle saying that like it's my dream to be a dominatrix and he was like get the fuck away from me that girl needs literal like pills. but isn't it your dream to be a dominatrix well we can get into that <laughs> Oh my God. Um, so yeah, we shoot the video and it went really well and I love them. And that was like amazing highlight trip. But after we were in London for a couple of days, um, it was super fun, but you already know London's not like necessarily my favorite place in the world. This was one of my favorite trips there. Like it, maybe slowly I'm in a redemption arc and there are so many sexy sexies there. So we, we might need to go back. I do love that accent. I think the canceled tour will end up stopping over there. I so. know. I can't wait. I'm, I'm like, I want to go. That. Let's go to Ireland. Ireland is fun. That's my dream. There's like castles everywhere. It's cute in their little accents. Um, but then I decided I wanted to go to Paris. And I want to tell you a story so badly. Don't tell me but. You tell know me that, that story. Feel, like I know everyone in the world hates when someone is like, I have a story to tell you, but I have to tell you later. And I feel like I'm like blue balling you and blue balling the audience. Yeah, blue you're edging us. But, <laughs> but I feel like the story might hurt some people if I tell it. All our stories hurt people. <laughs> <laughs> and I know for a fact on tour, I'm telling the full story on stage because it's no phones. Oh, Literally, yeah. This year, we can say whatever I feel like. Next week in New Haven, next week in Pittsburgh, next week in Harrisburg, I am telling this story in full. And it's, I'm not even going to be able to make eye contact with the crowd after. Like, oh, it's, I'm so excited. It's dark. I like, I could barely tell like my closest friends. And I know that I'll tell it in full at some point on the podcast. But three months down the line, hold her to it, you guys. Essentially, 
some of the choices I made on the rest of this European call me by your name summer trip okay. have led me to celibacy. And I I think I've seen this film before. It is so different than anything I've ever experienced. I have hit, how do you say, (laughs) my ceiling. No, I, you know what I think is going to happen to you soon? What? Is you're going to get so, it's going to be like um, that celebrity we talked about a couple episodes ago. You're going to get so bored that you're going to start having guys shit on tables. No, because no, 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 no. <laughs> I I already think that I, I've i hit, my, like, I, oh, I hit you're, my You're already feeling. at the shit on tables. I, I mean, no one shit anywhere, but to me, it's like the equivalent. Like, okay. I did things that were that, like, unforgivable. Not a, yeah, but uh, maybe, (laughs) I don't know, to the point that it's like, I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to have sex. I like, I can't really walk like right now even. And it's been like a couple days. Oh no. (laughs) Like I was limping through the airport. I'm not even kidding you. Like I was like, oh, it was bad. I've told everyone obviously off camera and every, when I told Hunter, he started crying when I told him this story. Like, oh. laughed so hard he cried, but oh, like, still, but like, still just was like, Tanner, utter, even like, for disdain. you, like, even for you, like, this is like insane. And Ooh, I can't I, wait to tell the story, but I'm going to give it a week or two in order to spare some feelings. Okay. Maybe start walking again. But as we're in Paris, this man who really likes me flew there to see me from LA. Yes. I want to unpack all of that as well with you because it was very, very sweet. And we had this whole conversation, you and I, on like the previous podcast about how like a sweet guy who does everything for you and like just loves you and is so sweet is amazing. But sometimes it's just not the vibe. I don't think it's for, I think I would rather have someone hate me. Okay. I know, and I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but I just mean like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, is it a little too much? Yeah, it just... Are you getting the ick? It's beyond that. I don't know. It's it's not... I need someone with a little grit, I think. Yeah, there's nothing gritty about that man. Like, and he's just so sweet. And we had an amazing time. Like, nothing against him at all. He's amazing. I think he also deserves a girl who's, like, golden retriever energy back. Maybe, I agree with that. Versus, like, rabid But maybe dog. that's maybe that's his appeal. Maybe that's why he's into you. He's like, she's she, she's gritty for me. We all wish we could automate certain things in our lives, whether that's doing laundry, grocery shopping, a robot that can dust around the house, a robot that can send terrible texts to your ex, whatever it may be, we all want to automate something. We live in an increasingly automated world, but some things still require tedious manual work. Luckily for e-commerce business owners, shipping is no longer a manual task thanks to ShipStation. Save time automating your shipping and returns in the ShipStation dashboard while keeping costs down with industry-leading discounts. ShipStation is the easiest to use when it comes to managing your dashboard and orders. They have a free trial and quick setup, and now is the time to try ShipStation if you've been on the fence. In my experience, I think the ShipStation shipping rates are the lowest compared to most competitors. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tasks for orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. Effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order from one simple dashboard, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every single shipment, and automate delivery notifications. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. With industry-leading discounts, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping get up to 84 percent off usps and ups rates and if that's not enough use my promo code to try shipstation free for two months over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with shipstation and 98 percent of companies that stick with shipstation for a year become customers for life spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with shipstation go to shipstation.com and use code canceled today to sign up for your free 60-day trial that's shipstation.com code canceled thanks to shipstation for sponsoring the Estás disfrutando de mi podcast? Thanks to Babbel, I know what that means. Do you? Recently, I've been learning to speak Spanish with Babbel, and you can too. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, check it off this summer with Babbel. Because with Babbel, again, you'll start speaking a new language in just Negative did happen to me on this trip. Not in France, but happened electronically. Oh, no. And I have to address this. Oh, God. Immediately. What is it? I'm going to give a little preface for everyone who doesn't know the story. 
Okay. And I hate that I'm bringing any more light to this. This is a, this is a negative episode. <laughs> We're all in London when we first get there one night. And it's Paige, me, Lottie Moss, Lucas, and we're all just like drinking, chilling. And we all start kind of daring each other to do like silly shit. And I'm going through my TikTok timeline and I see this man <gasps> that, <laughs> oh that I have never seen before in my life. Can I, look, one more time, I see this man that I have never seen before in my life, okay? I'm like, this guy is super hot. Paige and I are like, what are the odds you DM him something crazy? Say something Lila-y, something wild. We do a little one in three. We both say two. I say, fuck it. Well, I'm no stranger to sliding in someone's DMs. And you got to I look, me heard him. I go over to his Instagram from his TikTok. I, I'm not scrolling through his Instagram. I saw one TikTok. I'm, I click Instagram. You've seen I, enough. I slide in and I say, God sent me here. We know that one. We know that one. That one is a Lila extraordinaire. Actually, and, it's stolen from Miss Isabella. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. And within approximately an hour and a half, I receive a DM back unlike any DM I have received back before in my life. What did it say? He said, and I recognize this is embarrassing <laughs> for me <laughs> and very funny. <laughs> Touche on y'all. He says, sending you back to God, first class airmail. <laughs> Honestly, first class airmail, though, at least. Yeah. At I least, at least he sent me back first class. Um, that is, that is nice. And then sends me another DM and says, Don't you know my girlfriend? And I'm like, No, I, bitch. I don't, I don't know you. So, first of all, I don't know who you're dating. Second of all, no, I don't. And I'm just going to start off this story by saying as well, Dave Portnoy reacted to this whole situation. And Did he? Oh, and Brianna, Brianna said like, Tana got caught sliding to someone's boyfriend's DMs, right? And Dave is like, well, that's no surprise to me. You know what I mean? And I just want to put this on the record right now. I like a lot of things. I would venture to say I like mostly everything. I do Except not for men like- with girlfriends. I do not like taken men. I am six women in one. I don't need someone with another woman. You have enough going on with me. I will never be someone's side thing. I also hate home wrecking. As someone who has dated so many guys and watched them sit there and have girls side in and be like, don't tell Tana I want to suck your dick, you know? Like, I'm never going to be that person on the other end because yeah. it feels like fucking shit, mm -hmm. you know? So I just responded and said, oh, you're taken, sorry, bye. Or like, oh, he's taken, sorry, bye, whatever. I go to bed and I wake up to see that a woman by the name of Dura Castro <laughs> <laughs> mentioned me in her story. Not the story not mentioned. A, not a not a not a high, not a not a words. Mentioned me in her story. That's important to this narrative, I believe. I 100% believe that that is what then made so many of these preceding events a little more valid. Because if she just reached out and said something, you know, that's a person-to-person -person conversation. Yeah, she could down. be like, listen, we've met before. Like, why would you do that? And you would have been like, oh, my God, sorry, misunderstanding. But mentioned you in the story, she that made her dick hard. She was like, ooh, look at the clout I can get from this. Thank you. And so on her story is a screenshot of those wildly embarrassing DMs of me. <laughs> from me <laughs> Not the humiliation. And on the screenshot, she took the time to like make it a collage and collage in a photograph. Oh, she's artsy. Of her and I. She kind of ate with that. Absolutely. And if that was the true narrative and that, you know what I mean, whatever. Okay, there's so much more to unpack here. That photo was taken when I lived at Ogden. I had a kickback at the house, right? Mm-hmm. And I invited my friends, my close friends, the people I know and have the phone numbers of, et cetera, et cetera, to the house. And Diablo ends up bringing a gaggle of thoughties. And oh, a, gag <laughs> a gaggle, is that the plural of thought? <laughs> no, but that's funny. Looks <laughs> gag funny. Oh. Um, no, no, no. Ga it's just a lot. Yeah. Okay. And she happens to be one of them. And then as if this were TanaCon 2.0 in my home, she asks me to take a photo. Mm. To my knowledge, at this point, this is the only time I'd ever met her. And so then I proceed to respond 
And I don't even remember what I'm saying. And she blocked me now. So I'm like, listen, I didn't, I go, my bad. I didn't know he had a girlfriend. I'd like, whatever, da, 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 da. And then now she's responding to me being like, oh, I bet you fucking didn't, bitch. Da, 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 da. Like, you know me, like, blah, blah, blah. Simmer down. And I'm like, I'm telling you I didn't know. And I'm telling you my bad. And you don't want to take that. And you clearly yeah, want It's wanna, not like you're still trying. Like, at, you're at like, all. okay, slay. He has a boyfriend, girlfriend. Slay with your man. Like, I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at all. And it's like, you're not accepting this and you're still continuing to fight. She's mentioning me in her story again and again and again and whatever. I'm leaving London at this point and I am in a mood. I, I had the time. Rightfully so. I had the time. So I make a TikTok about the situation. Pretty aggressive TikTok, but it was an aggressive TikTok. And I definitely can acknowledge the fact that when you get me mad to a certain point, I'm going to say things that maybe 48 hours later I can then recognize. I could have said that a little nicer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But also you dumb delusional fucking thought. Like what the fuck is going on? Like it's still, it's, I still feel that way. Just a little less, you know, yeah. and I'll work on that forever. Maybe by the time I'm 40, I'll have full emotional regulation on 10 or I might be psycho 10 emotional forever. You have a tendency and it's one of my favorite things about you. Um, everyone's your best friend. Okay. I agree. So but she should not feel special. It's like, okay, like you had a good interaction with Tana. That's because she's sweet and nice to her fans. Okay. <laughs> you had a fan experience with Tana in her own home and you mistook it for Well, I I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to this a little more and give her a little more credit. Back and so then she's also commenting on everything, being like, is she still mad about Jake? Is she still mad about Jake? Sorry, I ship Jerica, <clears throat> all this stuff. And so I assume that she would now I'm trying to context clue it up. And I'm assuming that she was one of the thoughts that Jake maybe allegedly shysted on me with back in the day, you know, and I maybe didn't like her or something like that, whatever. Notice how she doesn't fucking remember. Okay. And I do vaguely remember back in the day, J like Jake and all that group making jokes about her. Like then, it, then I realized, okay, now I know where I've heard like, well, Duda she does Castro have a very yeah recognizable name. Come to find out. When I was with Jake, he made a music video and she starred in it. And I was very much pub or she was in it. And I was oh, very she's much a music video girl. I was very much publicly the world thought I was with Jake Paul at the time. You know what I mean? And she's making this TikTok where she's like kissing all over him. And the, the caption was like, sorry, Tana, or something. Like she was being an attention seeking, home wrecking whore. Whore at the time. And I remember commenting on that saying cute, a cute video. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And apparently after that, in Miami or somewhere, I, and God, if it was in Miami, so help me God, I ran into her again, fucked off my face. Like, don't remember anything. And apparently she claims we talked about the Jake situation. She wanted to make a TikTok where we were being all like, whatever, cutesy kissy to like, squash the situation well, and I, think, I drunkenly yeah, did it funny it's like okay when i saw this tiktok for the first time <laughs> two weeks ago <laughs> i don't remember this at all and that is my downfall i like especially at that time like i go out and i get fucked up and i talk to people and i yeah we know what that. alcohol does to her they now think maybe we're besties forever i don't remember that at all and then she's now still messaging me being it like it was in a bit unfortunate though after what you had said absolutely but she's still messaging me being like i know damn well you know my life and i know damn well you know me and i know damn well you know i have a boyfriend like da da da, da. and then and don't then give just, yourself so much credit and then victim flipping like please just leave us alone i woke up to Judah Castro mentioned you in your story. I would have never taken this public. I would have never taken your rat and your rat boyfriend ass public if you didn't fucking take it public first, okay? Like ever, 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 ever in a million fucking years. At one point, we start messaging each other back so crazy. Like, like whatever, like <laughs> bad. Like, uh, you're bad. You're like, I'm, I'm fighting this girl fully in the DMs. And I say die. Okay, so that is where I do draw the line. We're not supposed to tell anybody. Are y'all camera going on? Oh, I have a problem with loosely saying that when I am that mad at someone. I know. The same way we say like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Exactly. And we shouldn't. Like, I don't hope she dies at all. Mm -mm. A stub toe. A stub toe for sure. You know, orange juice after brushing her teeth. Bad things forever. Do, 
botched filler. Botched filler is such a funny thing to <laughs> wish on someone. And I hope one day her boyfriend been and her have a horrible breakup and he wants to fuck me out of spite. I can't lie. He probably doesn't after the, my you actions. Can't, but... You shouldn't want to fuck him. You should, if you I ever don't, fucked I don't. him after this. I'm not going after to. After he sent you back to God priority <laughs> <laughs> first class mail, dude. I'm not. I'll just have to send like Lila in or someone, you know? Yeah. So I think it pretty much ends there, my interactions with her. We like block each other. And then I get a call from Chris Miles. Oh, no. Where he tells me, for, and of course she dabbled in Chris Miles back in the day. So Okay, so who's the home record? So who dude wants up? who's who, bitch? But he tells me, and it, Chris, I don't think Chris has ever said this to me in my life. You need to be careful of that girl. <laughs> oh. She's fucking crazy. Oh, you told me this. I have a friend, NMK, back in the day, also had, this is all alleged in what I've heard from NMK herself and through the grapevine and et cetera. But NMK and Duda have beef. And one night they're both in the club. I think it was Bootsy Bellows here in LA. And Duda smashed a champagne bottle and stabbed her in the face with the broken glass. Yeah, honestly, so wipe everything I said about Duda. I love her. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> yeah, that's Leave of, it to of, me. All, of all people to publicly beef with, the, the bitch who's smashing bottles over people. Maybe and I, not. I also have heard stories about things that happened with her and her ex boyfriend that kind of go along those lines. I think. By the grace of God, I think she lives in like Brazil or something now. Oh, that's good. I can't imagine. But I will going there be going soon. out in LA with a bodyguard <laughs> for the next couple months. And I definitely uh wish it was never taken online. Yeah, that but was a bummer. I, I didn't See, start it. I and think then, there were there were situations I'm always on your team, but situations where you guys both maybe were a little wrong in the yeah. situation. No, I, I definitely took it too far, but so did she. And I also would have never gone online if she didn't take it on. Yeah, I guess I'd be fresh if I had a boyfriend and like someone who I even like was acquainted with at all DM my boyfriend. I'd be like, you dumb fucking. But, but I, you're still not putting you it on your know. story with a collage yeah. and you're still not you're like. Right. And if the person tells. I don't even know how to make a collage. And if the person tells you, like, I didn't know, you would say, okay, no worries. Okay, well, yeah, just don't do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then to make matters worse, I go on Emily Rodakowski's podcast. Oh, no. Um, she a couple asked days you ago, about it? I sit down and I'm like, hi, I'm Rada. Like, I'm so stoked. She's fucking the most iconic person. I love her. We're having a great conversation. And the first topic of discussion in this interview is Emily Rodakowski herself, international world-renowned supermodel, asking me, so what happened with Duda Castro? Oh, so in Duda got what, exactly what she wanted. In, in what world is Emily Rodakowski asking about Duda fucking Castro? It's honestly, that's so fucking funny. I was gripping the floor. Like, yeah. So to Dave Portnoy, I just want to clarify, I don't like taking people um, to Duda. There are some choice words I shouldn't have said. But again, um, you started you started the fire. And well, to God sent me here, man. Thank you for sending me back first class airmail. Speaking of Dave Portnoy, I want to talk quickly about Miss Brianna Chicken Fry. My idol, my icon, my president. Something in the orange tells me she's not done. She is not fucking done, dude. I love Brianna Chicken Fry, okay? And I started seeing all this, like, alleged Zach Bryan stuff on TikTok. And I, I'm like, I could text Brianna, but I like to be a fan sometimes. So if I, like, verified it with her, I couldn't participate in the speculation. <laughs> So I didn't even bother asking her. I was commenting on everything like, oh, shit. She's the house. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up because I was fucking loving it. My favorite story arc in the world is fan to lover. OK, because I love when it happens to me. I love when it happens to you. It's my favorite thing. It's yes, it is. It is right up there before enemies to lover trope. Fan to lover trope is everything. Okay, but that's a mental illness thing. Is it? Yeah. KSI and Logan Paul. Like Brianna Chicken story. Fry has confirmed her relationship with zach bryan she started as a fan and now he is her boyfriend and they are just fucking running around oklahoma together he's a probably country, fucking singing her a to sleep boyfriend is a fucking dream she is living Ugh. the fucking dream I, obviously i know a lot of people are sad or concerned about the timelines but life is life you know and i strongly you know. um support her and i believe 
wholeheartedly that she was out of that relationship before she was actually out of that relationship. I agree. Because uh, with anybody who moves on that quickly, it's like it was probably over before. Well, have you seen that like people always say like girls will move on completely in a relationship like two months before you know you want to do it, but you'll stick around and like try. And whereas guys like start from like the date that you know what I mean yeah I have seen people say that but regardless like listen if somebody comes into your life it doesn't matter if it's a a week after you broke up and you really like that person I don't think it should be like so against the rules thoughts though while we're on the topic of um timelines of Ariana Grande and Spongebob himself so I have known about their little divorce for quite some time Mm. now speaking of sitting on a breakup that no one knows about right like right now i'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information someone i hate is going through a terrible breakup that's gonna Wait, break you, the you fucking texted world in the group chat yesterday who was um, it? but i'm not gonna say anything about it because i won't be that person but the second it comes out we're gonna reference this clip and i'm gonna laugh so hard i strongly believe that there was some infidelity there and i you know i like ariana grande but does not have a history of being the most um, girl's girl isn't yeah. that what the, the girl said the she said she's not a girl's girl i believe she that. that that might is be what like, she said that that is what she said okay and if you look at the time or i mean her history i think that there's she's been like the other woman essentially mm-hmm. in a lot of situations like that and it is hard because like i've seen so many people say this but like could you fucking imagine you just had a baby Sorry. You just had a fucking baby, okay? You're probably at the most vulnerable state in your life and relationship mm. in general anyway. Mm. Not not only is your husband leaving you, he is leaving you for arguably the most famous pop star in the world. I'm killing myself. I'm I'm ending it all. Just joking. They were married and they have a newborn child. And there's photos of Ariana holding the baby. And they she, have and they, gone on and double, they would dates. double dates. Yeah, they would double date. A lot of it is like, who's saying this? Like, is it verified? I don't know. But like, I do, I do think that like the Dalton and Ariana thing has been over for a lot longer than people think it has. Like, I knew about it like a while ago. Yeah, I don't think it has really anything to do with Dalton. I think it's like the the double dates of it all, the baby of it all, the 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 baby of it all is like God, how horrible. Like, and and the. Like how messy it is. Like if you're going to do that and you're going to do something so like shameful and honestly disgusting, keep it to your fucking self for a second. Like, why are you being so messy? Like, why are you holding hands on set? Why are you guys publicly out together? Like, absolutely. Like that woman has is at home with her baby. Like breastfeeding still, you know, and I want to love her. Like, it makes me sad, but it's like, yeah, uh I mean, I'm with the mom every time. Everyone said that with. Because it even wasn't Pete Davidson on a break with Cassie David and they were supposed to get back together yeah, for like five and, days and then it was Ariana. Yeah. And same <laughs> thing, Big Sean and um, Big Sean and Naya, like she she wrote in her book about how like she came home and Ariana was just on the couch. Oh, that, that it's cra- that's what makes it like like a one time is like, OK, maybe there's context. We don't well, know. That's, yeah, so that's the thing. We've seen her repeat. do it so many times before. And it's like, I guess that in in the past, like the other girls haven't had enough of a like following or whatever for people to really publicly care but i think the baby of it all is why everybody is siding with the mother absolutely and imagine being Ariana with that song like break up with your girlfriend like come on break break up, up with, with your, your girlfriend because I'm, I'm bored oh shit she has to regret Scooter that better take you that know shit when, off apple music you know when you say something like it, like being funny and then someone uses it against you later like oh my god oh, my I, whole life. I love lying and then later somebody like uses it against you that sucks like that sucks that you wrote that ariana absolutely that's terrible but anyway justice for that girl and honestly not everyone you lose is a loss that man does the splits <laughs> no man should do the as splits. spongebob as no spongebob on Broadway. and he looks identical to frankie grande <laughs> oh my god i keep seeing that identical just like a brother what's sad about it is that he has fucked on himself so bad because now he has blown up his marriage like blown up his entire life for somebody who's gonna leave him in i'm gonna give it four months yeah it's tough dude it's super tough and they blew the movie nobody wants to see that fucking stupid movie now i'm 100 no, seeing that's, it that's, but oh i don't know what it is what movie is it SpongeBob? wicked oh i don't yeah spongebob you thought ariana was in spongebob <laughs> oh is she in wicked she's in wicked she plays glinda oh <laughs> anyway if my husband ever fucking leaves me for 
Taylor Swift or some shit. I'm- and that's that's the other thing is I think there's such a frustration for all of those women. I guess imagine now you go into a cafe and you and just you hear, can break up with your girlfriend because oh my god I would fucking like go we were just talking about this. I have like. Because I can imagine like the guys who like have had songs written about them by like Taylor Swift or something. And like you cannot escape that woman at all. I have a hard enough time. I posted about this yesterday, but like my ex's song just happens to be the song that everyone right now is using either to get engaged or walk down the aisle. Yeah, every I see like a wedding video once a week and it's a Clinton song. I want to comment on all these people's happy videos and say that man is a cheater and a liar. You're like, what about Georgia? What like, about like fucking what? Ed- what about like fucking? I, I will know, always love you, Andrea Bucelli. Like, <laughs> the, like this is not. Don't tell Courtney that. Like, you know what? It's a beautiful song, but like how frustrating it is to me to, to just be scrolling and want to see if this cute video of these two people so happily in love, and I hear butterflies. Can't, I'm like, I will end my life. Yesterday, I get home after a. 24 hour travel day, um, full 24 hours of flying and driving and flying and driving, whatever. And I'm just exhausted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And all I've wanted is my bed. And I'm so excited to lay down and smoke a joint and eat a snack and open up Netflix. And I open up Netflix and I'm like, oh, let's, let's look at movies. Mm-hmm. Number one in movies today, the untold story of Jake Paul. Oh, Jake that's Paul. Tough. I've seen billboards all over town. <laughs> Are they all over town? They're all over town. I'm going back to Europe. Oh my God. It's just, and I'm not even going to lie. I'd already seen it. I watched it in full on the plane. Brooke, I have a, a question. Okay. I couldn't not. It's like, I, Paige always asked me, like, I'm very much like, if my ex releases an album, I'm going to listen to it. If, if my ex is on, number one on Netflix today. I'm going to watch it. Like, I just want to know, you know? Yeah. And it actually was such an amazing documentary. Like, so good. And I'm really happy for him and his entire journey. And love Logan and love to watch it, honestly. um, I have a question. I'm two minutes into the documentary. And they are referencing his previous party lifestyle. And I see a video are you in it? Of me. Hmm. Can they do that? I'm in a pink shirt. We're matching. We dance. It's just a quick cameo. Like, it's nothing serious yes, at Netflix all. Yes, Netflix superstar. Yeah, it's my documentary. <laughs> I'm number one in movies today. No, um, and I see a quick cameo of me. I'm just curious. Can they do that without telling you? No, nobody reached out. Am well, I, I think, entitled to a settlement? No, I think that sometimes when certain things are posted online, it's like you give people like usage rights. The entire documentary is essentially about how fucking rich this man is. That's so <laughs> horrible. I would. Oh, I'm like, sorry. I want to cut. <laughs> I want to cut for my point two seconds, please. But the thing is, even if I sued that man, his lawyers, he taught me how to get good lawyers and never lose. You know. Yeah, so. he would end you with that fucking and I, seventeen million dollar house he has. And I, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And that is so never. hard. He is so successful. It's oh yeah. See, that's why we have to stop going for successful people. <laughs> Cause it's painful. It's like fun in the moment. And then after you have to watch them just get more and more successful. I well, I want to talk about something that I don't know if I want to talk about. Well, why would you do that? But I think I I think after a lot of thought, it's the right thing to do for me. Okay. And my safety. I was just in Europe for the last three weeks and I was supposed to be there for like four days and I just kept extending. Everyone's like, why? And I, I kept voicing, like, I don't want to go home to LA and everyone's kind of like, why? And on our last podcast together, I said, I'm going through something right now mm-hmm. that is like fucking terrible. I'm terrified to talk about it. And at that point, I was in the beginning of a legal thing with it. So I couldn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. I still can't tell the stories yet, and I can't wait to have an entire podcast about the stories of what's actually fucking happened here, but, and I I did tweet about it. I tweeted, my stalker is back, and it's not William. Yeah, so that's, I think that's what people get confused about is because this is not an, my OG. The, yeah, your original stalker. And the thing is, when I thought the William stuff was as bad as it possibly could be. 
it was nothing in comparison to what this is. Yeah. Like, this is so much worse. And William also was a, he's a, he's a slender build. Is new we guy could not take a, not, he's not. He, he would kill me with a pinky if oh, he could. And, really? Yeah, and, like, the way he looks is also, like, straight out of, like, jail. No, but, like, a documentary. Like, oh. a, like it's, it's really, really scary. Okay. And I'm saying this on the podcast because I want it to be known. If you love me online or you have ever talked to me online or messaged me on Instagram or on OF or on anything, and no, even if you feel extremely close to me because of what I do, and your connection to me. If I do not know you personally, and I mean close personally, and if I'm not telling you to come to where I am and to show up to my house, et cetera, et cetera, please, please, please don't come to my house. Don't come to where my hotels that I'm staying at. Don't come to where I'm eating. Don't follow my friends around. Don't and that's what's sad too, is it like transcends over into like like Amari came face to face with this person. Yeah, it's scary. It is it is ago. scary because like people do feel so close to you, especially if you are spending all day, you know, typing away mm. on your OF. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And I know that that's something that you sign up for with this, but it's so, so, so fucking terrifying. Yeah. And I've been dealing with this particular situation for about a year and a couple months now, but it's gone on and off in waves. And I have, it's so sad how little, and I've always said this, even with my OG stalker, how little the police care. Well, like, yeah, it's hard. LA especially, like the police really don't care unless like you're bleeding out. And they've told me that. Like they've literally said, if someone shows up with a weapon and threatens you with it, of course we'll be there in a second. But like, if you want to file a, like, a police report for like what's happening right now, like good luck. And- Every interaction I've had with 911 over this, because we've had to call 911 a couple times from shit showing up at or in the house and so on and so forth. Um, they'd be like, are you sure it's not a crazy ex-boyfriend? Well, I mean. Yeah, and that's so frustrating because it's like, oh God, like you can't even feel safe because it's like, who's protecting you? I remember at one at one point, the 911 operator was like, well, he sent you flowers. Like, isn't that kind of sweet? Like, was like laughing. And I'm like, like they, no. they just don't. My, the head of my security um, just told me, it was like, Tana, I love you to death. The police are never going to care. So now I have to have full-time security outside again. So what does he have to do for the police to finally give a fuck? Like hit you? Break in and be in the house or hurt me or attempt to hurt me. Or I guess with all of the <clears throat> messages and stuff, threaten me. I don't know if this person's like necessarily dangerous, but he's definitely like something is mentally like wrong with him. That's the head of my security does security for like everyone under the sun. Like, um, and was telling me stories about people like Alicia Keys and shit and like whatever. And he was like, I think, and he had one celebrity that before he started working for them, someone did kill them and like all this type of stuff. And he was telling me the craziest thing, the craziest type of person are the ones who believe they know you and they that you're dating and that yeah, you're star-crossed like the guy lovers who in there. Like always breaks into Kendall Jenner's house and he's like, we're in love. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you're not. That's why I've been avoiding LA. That's why I've been a little... I feel like if you know me in person, this is something we don't really talk about on the podcast ever, but you know this and everyone knows this. I am the most paranoid person ever. We talk about it a little bit. You're, not necessarily... I mean, you are paranoid, but it's it's safe. It's for good reason because, I mean... Yes, but I like there have been points in my life after certain stalking instances where it does like cripple and consume me. Like everywhere I go, I can't let anyone walk behind me. Like I don't Uber alone. Like I, I'm terrified of like anything. Like, you know what I mean? Every time the doorbell rings here, I like my heart jumps. Like I just am. And I felt like I was finally working through that, like in therapy and trying to just accept that that's my life and work through it. And now this is like back tenfold, the worst it's ever been in my entire life to the mm -hmm. point that I can't even talk about it. And I'm just living in that like crippling paranoia again. And it's, so yeah fucked it's so fucked that's a lot but you have security yeah. here you're safe yeah um i'm debating on getting a doberman 
Or a gun. Yeah, it's definitely not a Doberman. I'm going to go with gun if it needs to be one of the two. Neither are things I want to do, but I, I actually... This is in my entire life the most I've ever feared for my life. I walk around every single day and it's getting to the point where I like I'm having like almost like delusions of like, like not delusions, but like in my head, all I can picture is this person killing me or like okay, turning the well, corner I, that, in my room good. and them being there and what I would do or every time I go somewhere like, you know what I mean? And I feel really bad for Ashley specifically because this person has always hyper fixated on the two of us specifically and it just sucks you know and then it's like even right now i'm p pretending on instagram until this podcast comes out that i'm still in paris so i have like a few more days of like safety yeah yeah that is yeah. scary at least being on tour will kind of help that yeah i was just gonna say that well, we're gonna be gone and we're leaving so soon and i'm so excited our first um three shows are in new haven connecticut I know that was crazy. You guys sold out one, sold out a second. I think we've sold out the third. Like the fact that we're able to sell out that many shows in New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, like, I where's was, New Haven, Connecticut? Like, like, why is everyone so lit there? It's gonna be so much fucking fun. We're bringing Mike and Jeff and Aaron and um, you're coming. So. Yeah. Um, and there are our first special guests of the tour as well, Mike and Jeff. So that's exciting. We're gonna have a lot more. I'm so fucking excited for tour. I'm not prepared. Yeah. And then we'll be in Harrisburg and Pittsburgh after that. And there might still be tickets for that. We'll link the ticket link below. But I think there are a couple tickets left. Yeah, and maybe we'll add a second show them we before get they go. Spunky. And I'm so excited to tell the stories on stage that I could not tell today. Absolutely. I have something I want to talk about, but it's like a longer convo. I suck dick with Invisalign in. <laughs> <laughs> with and it I in? didn't think it was that weird. It was a little like toothy, but what? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's like you're just not like that aware. Like I mean, it's like you th your teeth are bigger all of a sudden. Yeah. But I like didn't really think it was that weird. I feel like it's like having braces. You know what I mean? But everyone I've told is like, yeah, well, you I almost can't do that. Invisalign, if you think about it, is kind of a rounded edge, so it would make your teeth. Yeah, like, you'd think it would make you like like gummy, sharp. like 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 sucking dick with no teeth. <laughs> but word to Aaron. I don't know. I just um, I guess I just wanted to know if you thought that that was like acceptable or not. When I had Invisalign, I would take out my trays to suck dick, so I don't okay, have any context. How, is it worse for me to be like, "Hold on." Both are acceptable. What did you feel any difference? Did he say anything? Was he like No, I felt a difference. I had to be way more aware, and that's like what put the thought in my head cuz I was like, "Ooh, maybe I should have not done that." Really? And it was fine. You should ask. You should do it next time without, and then ask him for a comparison. Okay. Honestly, I will. Could be good. While all of this is going on, and I am so concerned about people and things showing up to my house. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I receive a message from my security, and keep in mind, I live in a very nice neighborhood. I'm, I'm, I'm in the city, you know, but I live in a nice neighborhood. Uh huh. Yesterday. In front, this would only happen to me. In front of my house, a man driving a Tesla pulls up right in front of our house, gets out, and keep in mind, this is a street. People are walking their dogs on the street. Yeah, it is, is it's a busy street. area, broad daylight, gets out of his Tesla, sits down on the sidewalk, pulls his pants down, and diarrheas on the sidewalk in front of my house. Okay, listen, crazy story, but I do see how that could happen. You know when it's just like, you cannot drive one more second. I would rather shit myself in my car. No, I wouldn't. I had a shakshuka one time <laughs> that <laughs> nearly sent me to the hospital. You had a what? Have you heard of shakshuka? No. <laughs> would not recommend ordering it. Um. But sometimes it's just like you can't wait one more second. But and now and now what? I have to worry about getting my car detailed. How do I explain that? So you have a baby <laughs> in the front in the driver's seat on your lap. <laughs> so you have a dog. <laughs> okay, Brittany. That is not allowed. <laughs> I'm not shitting on maybe if it was in the hills. But also, like, keep in mind, you get to the end of my street and there's like a cafe. Like, I have a friend who has this hilarious story of a time that they were driving away from my house and this was when i lived in laurel canyon on the hills and the traffic on the hills is like fucking absurd and sometimes you'll be on the hill and there's no bathrooms no nothing for like 30 minutes and they were leaving my house and they had to shit so bad 
that they pulled over on the side of Laurel Canyon and they shit in a McDonald's cup and they wiped it with David Dobrik clickbait merch. <laughs> I need to know the friend. I, I'm sworn, I'm sworn so, so <clears throat> I hard know to who it is. I feel so confident that I know who it is. Even if you told me who it was, who you thought it was, I would, whatever. And I, I don't mean to look down upon this, but I, like, don't don't act above I, I, us I, now. I don't we have to... seen it time and time again on the canceled podcast. You cannot hold your shit. Lucky for you, you're mostly sedentary and you always have a bathroom <laughs> nearby. But if I were not sedentary, I could. I would be in a lot of pain. Well, yeah, okay. So then you have you can clench harder than others. <laughs> I probably can after this recent escapade. Ew. But <laughs> so soon i will be shitting myself those are things i don't want to know um, i can't wait to tell you that fucking story i can't wait to tell you that fucking story i can't wait to tell you that fucking story can i say i'm going to era's tour and that's why we have to end absolutely but i had one more question for you just in the very end of this okay what's the update on your harry jowsey situation i don't think i have an update but oh there's all kinds of things happening online with georgia and harry team georgia honestly because i don't know i just like women um but I don't have an update. He just kind of aired me out. And then I had to be like. Did he not reach out to you and say like, hey, mommy milkers? No, I DM'd him. And I was like, hey, like, what was that? And he was like, one more time for old time's sake. And I was like, oh, yeah, ha, ha, we, like, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but then upon further investigation, I decided that we are team Georgia. Is that it? Should we end? That's it. I have Wait, to go to yeah. Era's tour literally right now. I'm That's so why we excited. have to kind of abruptly cut it off. But I'm so sad you and I are going on different days, but our Swifty era is in full effect. And I'm so excited. I am you. so fucking excited. I could throw up. Well, you are going to have the absolute best day ever. I'm going to sit here and fear for my life in my Yay! own home. <laughs> and uh, God sent me here. God sent us here. We will see you. God will be sending us to New Haven, Connecticut, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and a bunch of other dates that we will link below if you want to come meet us and hang out. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Make sure to subscribe and follow on all platforms that you can to keep up to date with the shenanigans that is our lives and mine while I still have one. Thank you, guys. Love you. Bye.